Why was Jefferson regarded as a great man in America? Why were all these statues put up to him? Why were schools and institutions named after him? Well, because of his greatest contribution to the world was his authorship of the Declaration of Independence. You have Abraham Lincoln in 1860 writing all honor to Thomas Jefferson, who had the foresight to put into a mere revolutionary document, a document that was de declaring independence from the mother country, the opening two-lined paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence, those universal principles that all human beings are born equal and that they have and certain inalienable rights that they are endowed with by their creator, uh, and that legitimate government rests on the consent of the governed. And that has been, from the time Jefferson wrote it, an inspiration for peoples all around the world. On top of that, Jefferson was also known for, uh, these are the three um, items which he wanted listed on his gravestone. The author of the Declaration of Independence, the author of the Virginia Statute for Religious Liberty, and the founder of the University of Virginia. Uh, he said nothing about being president of the United States. Being so the third is, president wasn't that. That was not as important or as noteworthy in his estimation as education, uh, religious freedom, and establishing the overall principles of a liberal society. Now, as you mentioned, and Abraham Lincoln and others mentioned before, um, what Thomas Jefferson added uh, at the founding of America was highly unusual, wasn't it? Uh, by the standards of the time, by the ideas of the time. Where did Jefferson's ideas come from? What, what, what had he been reading and imbibing that meant that he, he was able to add in these extraordinary and important lines? Well, he uh, went to William and Mary uh, College in Virginia and, uh, and was... Uh, schooled in moral sense philosophy. So he read a lot of the Scottish thinkers. Um, he also, of course, read John Locke. And he put together his own, I think, particular amalgamation of ideas. They're essentially from John Locke, but he changed Locke in uh, the second treatise of government had spoken of life, liberty, and property. And one of the greatest, well, there are several great changes that Jefferson made in the Declaration of Independence. One was to substitute the pursuit of happiness mm. uh, for Locke's discussion of proper, mention of property. But the pursuit of happiness, I think, and I think most scholars will agree, except for Gary Wills, uh, but most scholars um, uh, uh, agree that ownership uh, of property is a, is a significant part of the pursuit of happiness. People right. do want to own property, but Jefferson gave it a more capacious understanding mm. uh, so that there were other factors included. Um, and this, I think, is traceable to the whole Western tradition of moral philosophy, where which I teach. Mm. And every major moral philosopher is concerned with virtue. And so um, uh, the pursuit of happiness, that happiness in some way has something to do with being um, a, an ethical person, a moral person, and inculcating the virtues that will um, help one to succeed and flourish in, uh, in one's own life. Mm -hmm.